Hello, friends, and welcome to another video. This week, we're gonna be staying in every hotel on the Vegas Strip. Move over, Rat Pack. Sophia and Tyler are coming to town. Now, the Las Vegas Strip is pretty world famous for being a partying, shopping, and gambling destination, a hotspot for entertainment, nightlife, and general debauchery. And there are a number of huge, usually themed, casino mega resorts on the Vegas Strip. If you've ever seen Ocean's Eleven or The Hangover, you probably know a few like the Bellagio, Caesar's Palace, Paris, which though they all share a general slate of amenities, the chokehold that Cirque du Soleil has on Vegas casinos is truly mind-boggling. They each also have their own unique characteristics and charm, and at night, turn the Vegas skyline into a glittering jewel in the desert. Now, I actually don't know if you guys know this, but Tyler and I are pretty big fans of Las Vegas. It might be a bit surprising since we aren't huge gamblers or partiers or Gucci shopper adders, but we love of Vegas. Some combination of the over-the-top theming, giant hotels, and everything being open super, super late just rocks. We love walking around malls. We are, for better or for worse, some iteration of Disney adults. And I'd say the Vegas Strip is kind of like a giant adult mall Disneyland, just with more boobs and more alcohol. But even having been to Vegas a few times, we haven't even come close to staying at all of the hotels on the Vegas Strip. And every time we go, I always wonder, what would it be like to stay there? There or there. What is it really like inside of the Excalibur? So we decided to put our love of Vegas to the test by going on a two week long Vegas extravaganza and staying in every casino on the strip. Are we insane? Yes, probably. Are we blacked out? Not yet. Don't worry, mom. That was a joke. Or was it? It was. Also, this video is gonna need two parts because we have a lot of ground to cover. So make sure you're subscribed in order to catch part two as well. On that note, I do wanna take a moment to thank the sponsor of today's video, PayPal Honey. If you haven't heard of Honey, you probably have, but if you haven't, Honey is a free browser extension that helps save you money when you shop online. Basically, the way it works is that whenever you go to check out, this little coiny guy will scour the internet for promo codes for whatever website you're on. Need a swimsuit to wear to DJ Polly D's day party at Dre's? A flaming bowling shirt to wear to Guy Fieri's restaurant? A pair of fish flops to wear after your fish pedicure at Circus Circus? Yes, they have that. Honey's got your back. Working on a huge variety of different websites, from clothing to beauty to home goods, searching for promo codes to help you find better prices. So thanks to Honey for enabling years of wild antics on this channel. This might be the wildest one yet. And make sure to get Honey for free using my link, joinhoney.com slash Sophia, for a good time and to save some of your hard-earned cash. And with that, let's head to Vegas. So in talking about which hotels we're gonna be staying at, we only really considered hotels that have addresses directly on South Las Vegas Boulevard, between the iconic Welcome to Las Vegas sign and the Strat Hotel. We were mostly working off of this list, which includes all of the big major casinos that we all know and love, but excludes anything that's just off the strip, as well as any timeshare properties like the Hilton Vacation Club and any smaller chain hotels, like the Travelodge next to Circus Circus. And that puts the list of Las Vegas strip properties that met our criteria at 33. And our plan of attack is to start here at the south end of the strip, work our way north on the west side of the street, and then when we get to the end, turn around and do the other side. Now, just to be clear, we did book a room at every single one of the hotels on our list. Come on in, come on in, come on in. And we tried as best as we could to get the base room in each place so we could generally compare them. I feel like we're gonna have to alternate cuddling in a double bed together or sleeping apart and sleeping very fitfully and well. You speak for yourself. I need as much space as possible for my plantar fasciitis. But in order to knock out 33 hotels in about two weeks, we can't spend the whole night in every room. Get that plantar fasciitis off this bed. Instead, we're gonna be hitting two to three hotels a day and only spending the night in the last one. <laughs> You're alive. <laughs> I'm oh, sorry, I thought we were giving our review of the bed. What are you, planking? And different members of our team are gonna be staying in the other rooms. So sorry for the slight clickbait, but you guys are gonna get to see a hotel room in all 33 hotels. Listen, if we got the, the card. The card. If we got a key card, we stayed here. Right. Also, we filmed this in July, so if we're complaining about the heat, that's why. I feel like I'm in a pizza oven right now. At least in like one of those like Pizza Hut sleeves. It's delivery and DiGiorno at the same time. But without further ado, on to day one. Are you ready, Tyler? I think I have to be. Have you iced your foot sufficiently? I'm gonna have to ice as we go. Now, we could almost call day one Mandalay Day because all three of our first hotels were inside of the same Mandalay Bay building. Who's Brian Newman? 
approaching that side. And they all share one casino floor. The Four Seasons takes up a couple of floors of a specific wing of the hotel. Yeah, see, this is the view from our Four Seasons room, is that we are in the Mandalay Bay. And then the Delano is kind of like attached to the back. We took on the Four Seasons first, which is definitely a fancy hotel. In fact, it was actually the most expensive room on our entire roster at over $1,000 for one night. But overall, it was kind of like generic luxury. I mean, it's a Four Seasons hotel. It's supposed to be nice. It smells like a spa. It's got some fancy artwork. But for Vegas, which is all about theming and entertainment and flashiness, it's pretty normal. Come on. The room itself was definitely high-end accommodation. The beds and linens were very very soft and plush. The pillows are pretty luxury. The bathroom had all of the fancy trappings like a separate toilet room and a separate shower and tub, but overall, there just wasn't anything super special or stylized about it. They're not giving me sensual Vegas vibes. No. This is not, you know, a, um, a party tub. So I guess we are starting off with not really a bang. It's a nice room. It was just expensive. One of the only notable things besides this poodle, a giant poodle made out of crayons. I like it. And the giant mushroom lobby sculpture was that there were a ton of NBA players staying there for summer league, which I didn't know was a thing, but apparently it's a thing. And Tyler's already seen many people that he knows. And weirdly, some people that I know also. We did try to film around them, but it's hard because they're just so tall. See, we're in a situation where, where whenever there's a tall person, I think they must be an NBA player, right? That's how it works, right? Super tall and wearing stuff, are you an NBA player? Our designated activity at the Four Seasons was their famous all-you-can-eat brunch. Meal one. Meal one of 45? Are you for 15 days? I think we are. Well, that's a lot of meals. Yeah. <laughs> and it was actually a pretty impressive spread. French toast pudding, chicken and waffles. Arby's no longer has the meats. No. We have the meats. Four seasons, Vegas. They had a lot of different cuisines, a pastry hutch, a make your own omelet bar, and a fried to order mini donut bar. They made me an offer I couldn't refuse. It's in the Is it amazing? In the video. We're done. <laughs> We're moving in, Four Seasons, we're moving in the restaurant, right there's the hotel, here. I think my favorite part was weirdly that they chilled their iced coffee with coffee ice cubes. So there's no diluting of the iced coffee as the ice melts, because the ice is coffee, so it's just more coffee. Which is pretty elevated. Layers and layers and layers. Honestly, I don't really see myself coming back to stay at the Four Seasons in Vegas specifically, but I would be interested in coming back for their brunch. All right, we're going there next. All right, you lead the way. Let's go. Come here, though. Oh, okay. Holding my leg. I was gonna hold the door open with this foot and narrowly miss being clipped by the door, all right. Nice. Things are looking up. Is that how you got plantar fasciitis? Probably. From the door? Weird foot machinations. So then we were headed to the Delano. All right, we're going to the bridge. And you can spelunk there, AKA get there without having to go outside, as you can go down a long hallway, cross through the Mandalay Bay casino floor. I'll direct you, you're good, you're good, you're good. Guy on your right, guy on your left, guy on your left, yep, yeah. <laughs> then go down another long hallway until you reach the Delano. The Delano is sort of just like an extra tower of the Mandalay Bay, but it is quite stylized in its own right. Cheesecake Factory vibes, right? Well, it doesn't hurt that there's like a restaurant next to it, you know? It's giving cheesecake. It's sort of brassy and tall with a lot of light fixtures and art installations. What the heck? That is a giant rock. Rocks, blocks, sticks. Four elements. Rocks, blocks, and sticks. In fact, because there's not a lot of other activities in the Delano itself, the main attraction in the lobby is kind of these giant rocks. Whoa, these rocks are 700 million years old? That's pretty old. Which are a crowd favorite. We thought those guys were gonna clear out so you get the shot, but they all just stopped to look at the rock. Hey, look at the rock. The Delano is actually all sweets. Come on in. Oh, wow. It's, it's my tagline now. That's my thing. <laughs> <laughs> so even though we had a base level room, it was pretty nice and large. Oh, wow. This is not even the whole room. We had like a sitting room, a bedroom, and a large bathroom with my favorite separate toilet room, shower, and tub. You fan? This is the unseen bathroom dance from earlier. <laughs> and though the styling was a little random. Are we underwater? No, we're at the Delano. I thought there was some pizzazz to it. Ah, there's the sensual Vegas vibe I was looking for. Right. Specifically, the large quilted headboard made an impression on me. As you said, it's huge. Yeah, I didn't even get out all the way up to it. Yeah. And the doors are also kind of tall. It's an imposing room. I agree. Intimidating. I'm, I'm intimidated by the Delano. <laughs> and for being the room right after the Four Seasons, when you compare the price, I think the Delano has an edge because it's bigger and more interesting to look at. And they've got rocks. Love it. I love rocks, man. 
after that, we were on to the Mandalay Bay proper, which is kind of like the parent hotel of the three. And just to get it out of the way, come on in. Here is the room. Oh, actually, pretty nice. <laughs> Overall, it's a comfortable room. This room is pretty big. It's quite large and kind of has a cabana vibe to it. And for the price, I was pretty pleased. This is the Sophia Films the Bathroom segment, which for some reason is a thing. Giant bathtub, normal size shower. Exciting toilet painting. I mean, everything feels like a steal compared to the Four Seasons. But to be honest, the room wasn't really the highlight of the Mandalay Bay for us because there's a lot of stuff in there. Besides the casino floor, there are a lot of different nooks and crannies. Love me a good water feature. This is a good one. This is a good one. With stores, bars, and restaurants. <laughs> Reading straight from the serving plates. Don't judge us. <laughs> That's like one of the reasons we got married. <laughs> <laughs> and there's also a lot of different attractions. The whole place has kind of an aquatic, beachy, reefy theme, and so do the activities we ended up doing there. Come on in. Oh my god, it's hot. We're out. Yeah. <laughs> First up, we headed to the Mandalay Beach wave pool and lazy river outside. All right, Tyler's gonna go take his shirt off. The wave pool was nice and cold. It's so hot. It is very hot. So hot. Want to touch the high knee. What she said. Though I was nervous that I was gonna drop my phone in. Oh, it's me. You better watch that iPhone, Saf. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think I got the shot. That was close. So we quickly switched over to the Lazy River. Unfortunately, you had to buy your own inner tube for like 30 bucks, which we passed on. But I think you can also just walk the Lazy River. There are people walking There are it. people walking in it. So that's what we're gonna do. What well, I feel like we're in like a water aerobics class right we're now. Jogging. Literally You're zooming, dude. And then the other activity that we did at the Mandalay Bay was the Shark Reef Aquarium. Let's go! Literally, too. The Shark Reef Aquarium! Literally. They have a whole aquarium somewhere in the depths of their hotel. Oh, wow. There's a rainforest cafe in here. And it was actually pretty legit. Oh my god, he's so still. Oh, he's giving me shivers. Wait, wait. Oh! It started off kind of slow with some turtles, a croc, a piranha or two. I know you from River Monsters. But a little further in, there were stingrays and sharks you could touch, a tower of jellyfish, an aqua tunnel with baby hammerheads. That rock. And then at the end, a huge shark tank that kind of looked like a shipwreck, which provided us some very unique perspectives on a bunch of different sharks. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh, he's a big boy. <laughs> he's a big one. That was pretty much our day one. We did go to Michael Mina's strip steak restaurant for dinner, where Tyler got some killer creamed corn. We're at strip steak. We're on the Vegas Strip. Tyler's doing a strip tease. He's eating a steak. And then it was off to bed, since we had a lot to tackle on day two, which we're dubbing our giant behemoth edifices day. Since our two hotels for this day were the Luxor, which is a giant pyramid, and the Excalibur, which is a giant castle. And I think they are both well known on the strip because they're so identifiable and are both famously themed in a Vegas meets Epcot kind of way. The way you get to the Luxor from the Mandalay Bay is this long, narrow mall you can walk through. Like the Bering Strait Land Bridge. <laughs> which is another great example of you can travel miles in Vegas without having to go outside. Oh! This place is huge! <laughs> I know, I just said <laughs> Whoa! And when you walk into the Luxor, its scale is pretty impressive. Oh. Oh, there's a big obelisk and a little sphinx, a couple of sphinxes. And the blue man group. The entire pyramid is hollow inside, so it's very cavernous. I, I just love that word, cavernous. It is cavernous. It's very quiet and like stony, and the whole interior is completely devoid of sunlight, which really does give it Pharaoh's tomb vibes. I can't stop looking like straight up. Yeah. Like, literally just like looking up. Here's my angle of choice. It's huge! They also have a model city of what must be the city of Luxor inside of it. But when we got a better look from up above, there seemed to be a rogue Chrysler building in the mix. Right? That is the Chrysler building. They just repurposed that from New York, New York. That's definitely like a rejected New York, New York building. Speaking of being high up, we got to rewind to the elevator situation. It's kind of rattling right now. It's kind of rattling around. It's trudging along. Because they scale the corners of the pyramid at a diagonal, which totally messes up your equilibrium. Ooh, actually I can tell. Suddenly I'm busy. And already off balance, you are then immediately confronted with a narrow pathway next to like a hundred foot drop down to the center of the pyramid. Oh, wow. Oh, I just got a little weak in the legs. <laughs> Oh my god, I can't look down, I can't look down, I can't look down. Pretty terrifying, and probably even scarier when you're drunk. <laughs> 
my Pretty hotel keys rattling like my teeth are chattering. Courage, cowardly dog. Yeah, exactly. Return the slap. Return the hotel key before 3 p.m. In terms of the room, come on it. The Luxor is not supposed to be super nice, and with that in mind, I thought the room was overall okay. Seemed serviceable. It's better than the hallway. <laughs> but beyond the very loud AC unit, I do love me some white noise. It's a little grating. It's not quite white noise anymore. <laughs> the window situation was also kind of strange. First off, since the window is part of the pyramid, it cuts into the room at an angle. I feel like we're in the RV right now. <laughs> and then there's also the black wrapping around the entire building, which makes it really hard to see out of. Oh, the mesh is part of the outside. It's yeah. not like a sunscreen I can like lift. Yeah. No. It's kind of hard to see out. So some quirks. Illuminati much? <laughs> Here's this eye watching you in your hotel room that's on the side of this pyramid. But not the worst. Oh, it's okay actually. That's pretty nice. The, the sheets are actually not so bad. After descending, we had our choice of different things we could do at the Luxor, because there's actually a lot. They have their main casino floor, a bunch of restaurants, bars, and their esports arena, all on the floor below, which is kind of low ceilinged and squished. And then in their main atrium, they have multiple shows and exhibits to choose from. It's like you can go to Carrot Top, Blue Man Group, Striptease, or the Bodies or Titanic exhibit. We ended up walking through the Titanic exhibit, which to be honest, is an interesting tone shift from irreverent fun Vegas to like sad and somber exhibit. But then they also make you take photos where you recreate scenes from the movie. Y'all ever seen the movie? Yes. And you know what this is Which is also kind of weird because it's a very sad exhibit. Before heading out, we decided to get lunch at the Luxor food court, which I had heard was pretty good. All right, I think it's time for my beloved Johnny Rockets, which I haven't had in years actually. This was a grave mistake. I had previously liked Johnny Rockets, but I was not prepared for the three chicken sandwiches I bought there to cost $70. That's Vegas pricing. That's so crazy, right? This better be the chicken sandwich of my life. Unfortunately, it was not. I feel betrayed by Johnny Rockets. <laughs> so with our love for Johnny Rockets permanently entombed, we headed outside into the sweltering heat and hopped on the monorail to our next hotel, the Excalibur. It just got real. The Excalibur is like general Renaissance fair slash medieval slash King Arthur themed, and I've always wanted to go. In fact, I threatened to have my bachelorette party there in 2019, but no one wanted to go with me. How do we stay there? Your pool side? Yeah. Pool side? Good room. Mozart. <laughs> and to be honest, when you walk in, the theming does live up to the hype. This is everything. Wow. I love it. They have stained glass windows. They have suits of armor. They have turrets. They have stones. It's awesome. It's exactly what I wanted. It is like medieval times on crack or like Legoland, but instead of children, it's filled with bites. It's kitschy and also it's packed. There's a lot happening. Excalibur is bumping tonight, yeah. okay? It's a Sunday night and Excalibur is jumping, jumping. There were a lot of families there, I think because of the theming and also because of their really built out arcade. We got ski ball. I know. But they do also have the Australian Bee Gees and Thunder Down Under. So it's not all family friendly. Yeah, you know, they got a show downstairs where they're swinging their sticks around and also upstairs. <laughs> <laughs> we opted for our activity to do the Tournament of Kings jousting show. In general, we were trying to stray away from just going to shows just to avoid filming Cirque du Soleil performers all week. But we kind of had to do this one because it's epic. Jello shots? We do jello shots. It is very similar to medieval times where it's like dinner and a show. Oh, and they separate you into different sections to cheer for the different knights that fight in King Arthur's tournament. I like how it's um, Ireland, Romania, Norway, Spain, dragon. <laughs> We were seated in the dragon section, which meant that we were cheering for Mordred and the forces of evil. Like when King Arthur got stabbed, we cheered. The show was honestly sick. Our guy breathed fire a bunch of times. So that's dragon. That's our guy. That's our guy. <laughs> and to be honest, I think he was robbed. Father, no! I have defeated the dragon. No! 
So overall, my impression of the main hotel body and attractions was pretty positive. The only negative was that after the dust from the horses, the smoke from the fireworks and jewels around the casino, and the stifling Vegas heat, we were kind of yearning for a breath of fresh air. We've gotten a yeah. lot of casino air for the last couple of days. Yeah. And our room did not provide any respite on that front. Come on in. Now the Excalibur is a more budget hotel, so you shouldn't expect a luxury experience. Okay. It's fine. It's fine. But beyond just being basic accommodation, the room was unfortunately not the cleanest. The wall is not particularly clean looking. But I feel like I don't want to know. There were a couple of scuffs on the wall and the air was a little musty, which one can overlook, but it was the brown marks on my pillow which were tougher to look past. Eh? There's definitely stuff on this pillowcase. My first instinct was to flip the pillow over, but there were some on the other side too. This pillowcase is a little gross. That actually is a pretty gross pillowcase. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna... So I was forced to move into Tyler's double bed, which was pretty cramped between me, Tyler, and Tyler's plantar fasciitis brace. Um, I didn't look too closely at these pillows. I didn't want to ruin this bed for us too. The safety is in the illusion. What? <laughs> So some high highs and some low lows. On to day three. Good morning, Excalibur! And this day was kind of like our unexpected gem day, where we crossed the proverbial pond from King Arthur's Court to New York, New York. A hotel so nice, they named it twice. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Park MGM and Nomad. Prepare your loins, good your loins! <laughs> now, New York, New York is another one of those classic Vegasy, super themed hotels that is pretty famous, or I think at least pretty visible on the strip. Welcome to the concrete jungle. For some reason, I've never actually been to New York, New York. Not sure why, but I've just never felt the urge to go. Live from Nevada, it's Monday morning. <laughs> and though the hotel is not supposed to be super fancy, the intricacy and dedication to the theme and the general ambiance and vibe really impressed me. Next to the casino floor, they have a whole set of fake New York side streets. That's well done. Yeah. It's like the Warner Bros. studio lot. Complete with delis, restaurants, coffee shops, and one very dedicated New York Jets fan. Poor guy. And there's a fair amount of different attractions here. There's a Hershey factory. Why is New York trying to come from Pennsylvania's wig right now? And Hershey Park, come yeah, on, man. There's another really built out arcade. It's a good arcade. You can't hear anything. Yeah, it's very loud. It's like the loudest but the most obvious choice for us was the Big Apple roller coaster. Oh, it's the Coney Island thing, I get it. Which is actually a very prominent part of the exterior of the hotel. You have the Statue of Liberty, and then you have the roller coaster going around her. I see like a curly cue. Oh yeah, there's an upside down portion. From the ground, the roller coaster looks a little crazy, and on it, it is crazy. <laughs> It's an exciting roller coaster, but it is also kind of bumpy. <laughs> so we all ended up pretty sore afterwards. I feel a little jostled around. You know what I mean? Towards this <laughs> Before we head on to the next hotel, the come on in. Here's the New York, New York room. Ooh. Actually, kind of nice. I kind of like this room, yeah. Which was definitely not bad. It's all springy. <laughs> You're like this. <laughs> I'm testing it. It was unfortunately less themed than downstairs, but was still a little themed. You know, the shower was kind of skyscraper gray. The only thing that's a bit odd is that the whole room has like a pink tint. Maybe we're in like one of the buildings that's red. But the best part of the room was the view of the roller coaster's drop, which was directly outside of our window. See ya. A nice reminder of where my bruises came from. I rode the New York, New York roller coaster one time and then it was all over for me. Fair. After that, we headed over to the Park MGM. If you can incidentally walk through any of these misters, that'd be great. Which you kind of walk next to the fake Brooklyn Bridge to get to. This hotel used to be the Monte Carlo Casino until 2016 when it got a makeover and was rebranded as the Park MGM. And the Park MGM feels very new and very nice. And it is also, I believe, the first and only casino on the strip to be completely smoke free. It smells kind of like soapy and perfumey. It does. This is nice. And this provides provided us a lot of respite. After the dust and smoke of the last couple of days, I walked into the Park MGM and I was like, my head is clear and I feel awesome. I really like this hotel. The price tag on our room was not that expensive,
expensive, but the whole place does feel kind of luxury. It's bright, well lit, green, and tranquil. The pools are super nice. It's really pretty back here. There's a giant tree in the lobby for no reason. Look at how girthy these roots are. <laughs> Pretty big. It's very pleasant. Tyler thinks it's supposed to be like Central Park next to New York, New York, which kind of makes sense, but is just a theory, a casino theory. Always bright. Hi. Hi. The room itself was a bit more simple and austere. Oh, it's small. It's cute though. It is pretty cute. I like it. It's compact. It was on the smaller side and weirdly didn't have a lot of furniture or like surfaces to put your stuff on. I like how people do roll this way but there's like nothing this way. <laughs> It's a pretty empty corner. It's an empty corner! But it did feel very clean. I don't see any spots. Let's check this one. Ooh, this is a nice pillow. So I was perfectly happy to stay there. It's all green. Now, our third hotel of the day, the Nomad, was actually inside of the Park MGM. If you kind of walk through the elevator bank and hang a right, you're suddenly in a dark, moody, deep red, velvety jazz lounge, which is the Nomad Hotel. Do people know about this place? It's really nice. Really nice. I would say the theming here is kind of like 1920s whiskey in the library, but there's also some latent dog theming for no reason. I mean, sort of. A little, right? Like, look at those two dogs. And this really does feel like an unexpected gem because it's very hidden and small, but really nice. Dude, the room key came in like a velvet case. Let me see, let me see. Oh, that's fancy. That's fancy. Now, in terms of the room, I have to be honest, I think they upgraded us for no reason. <laughs> All right, so we have a slightly nicer room here, yeah. but we didn't mean to. Yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry. So although we didn't pay more, I think this is no longer the base room. Come on in. Oh, wow. Which you can kind of tell because it was huge. There were multiple rooms inside of it, lots of plush furniture and velvet chaise lounges, a huge bed. Oh, this is nice. That's a nice bed. This is luxury. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing that I didn't like was that the bathroom was split up into many locations. There was a separate toilet room near the entrance, a bathtub in the bedroom. Oh, that's sensual. <laughs> that's a Vegas behavior for sure. And then a shower and vanity, but no toilet in a second bathroom. We hypothesize that this is optimized for lovemaking. For an easy transfer from oh. bathtub to, to Bed but it honestly seems inconvenient. You're gonna get water everywhere. It sounds awful. <laughs> Now, in terms of activities, the Park MGM has a fair amount of stuff. There are a lot of good restaurants and bars. Lady Gaga has her residency there. And we decided the thing we wanted to do was eat. Italy. We hit up Italy for lunch, which is not a Vegas exclusive, but it is awesome. It's kind of like a multi-station Italian market, and we went ham. I'm very happy with our ordering. I just spent a fair amount of money, but weirdly, not that much more than we spent at Johnny Rockets yesterday. And I'm I'm not even kidding. That is weird. It's weird. That's weird. We got margarita pizza. We got fresh pasta made to order. You keep just appearing with new food. I forgot to give back my buzzer. We got kebabs for no reason, but it was a good call because they were good and no crumb was left behind. Are you okay? So good. <laughs> Tyler's near tears. Not okay. I love it. And then for dinner, we hit up Roy Choi's restaurant, Best Friend, which is themed like a Korean convenience store in the front and a block party in the back. It's as big as Tyler's head. It is. So all in all, day three. Oh, that's sexy. Unexpected gems all around. So day four, we're calling our sleek and chic day because the places we're going to are all kind of swanky, glittery, and modern, and the buildings are all tall and made of glass. We're going to all the hotels that are just sort of like blocking us out from the rest of the strip. We have the Waldorf Astoria, the Aria, and the Cosmopolitan, which are all a bit north of the Park MGM. There's a CVS right there. Do we need anything? The Waldorf Astoria was up first, which is a traditionally fancy hotel chain, and there's no casino in there. It's just like a luxe hotel. It smells super good. It really does. And one of the cool things about it is that the lobby is on like the 23rd floor. So it immediately has that kind of penthousey vibe. And though the room here was not cheap, it was less expensive than the Four Seasons and had way more of that luxury vibe to it. Like everything was marble and stylized. There were random orchids everywhere. The hallway in particular was very upscale. Why does this remind me of Sex and the City? Oh, because it's Richard's Hotel. Yeah. And this room. Ooh. Oh man, this looks nice. Come on. In. Might be the fanciest room that we stayed in in Vegas. Whoa, look at that bathtub. Whoa, look at that bathroom. This is 
very nice. <laughs> oh, wow. 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 It definitely has some trappings of luxury to it. Let me hit relax. What happens? Ooh. Ah! The lights went off. Sorry. Sorry. The textiles are plush, the wood is dark, there's marble everywhere. The bathtub is visible, but in a tasteful way. Oh, wow. Oh. Optionality. And besides the extremely weighty pillow. Oh. <laughs> you feeling calmer now? Yeah, actually, it's helping me. <laughs> they also have a valet closet. Do I know exactly what it's for? No, but it feels fancy. The only downside of this hotel is that it's pretty small and there's not a ton to do. We ate sort of an early lunch there and I ended up having tuna for breakfast, which was random feeling, but the food was good. After exiting the Waldorf, we headed up a random flight of stairs and into this pretty bougie mall, which is actually also on theme because it's called the Shops at Crystals, then through the mall and into the Aria Hotel. My stack of hotel keys is growing so large. All right, hotel number 10, the Aria. And the Aria is a confusing one. The building feels really giant and there's a ton of different decor choices throughout. The Aria lobby is beautiful. Yes. The Aria lobby smells like vanilla marshmallows. Yes. The Aria lobby makes no sense. <laughs> they had these cloud thingies suspended in the air. I'm going with it, they're little dumplings. Some crystals, a few water features. <laughs> I touched it. These giant metal playing cards, a random honeycomb, these wiry light fixtures. Is this a theme? We spent a lot of time trying to figure out what was going on. And the room at the Aria. Come on. Did not elucidate this matter any further for us. A bed, blur, and beyond. <laughs> the room itself is totally fine. Nothing to write home about, but definitely more than serviceable as a launching pad for a night out. The only extra sniff of theming we found up here were these blurry pictures. Yeah. It looks like we censored that, but it's just like a painting of nothing. Which might play into a drunken theme or party atmosphere. And weirdly, that was backed up in the main hotel as well. Hey, he's walking here. <laughs> <laughs> With these blurry pictures of Christopher Walken. All the paintings are blurry because everyone's hammered. I get it. I get it. I finally get it. But tipsy to no theming aside, there is a lot to do at the Aria with a huge casino floor, some kind of famous restaurants like Catch and Din Tai Fung, as well as a mall inside of the hotel. We opted to go for the 24 hour patisserie in the middle of the casino, which sells sandwiches and lattes and gourmet chocolates at all hours of the night. So we got a bunch of truffles and a breakfast burrito. On a scale of one to dragon, how's the burrito? Pretty dragon. <laughs> Quick note, the Aria does have a little sister hotel called the Vidara, which is next door, but it is not physically connected to the Aria, so you have to walk outside. And it itself does not have a Las Vegas Boulevard address, so it doesn't technically meet our criteria. I'm sorry, Vidara. You're out. So we did not stay here. Ignore this shot of the room and this shot of the canoe sculpture outside. There's a bunch of canoes like welded together. It's a Frank canoe. It's a Frank canoe. So after that, we headed back through the fancy mall across another short land bridge until we arrived at our third hotel. I see the Cosmo. Target locked. And the Cosmopolitan Hotel is quite similar to the Aria, except the layout is more vertical and the theming is a little bit stronger. The Cosmo is for partying with jewels on. <laughs> Basically. They go a bit further in on the glitzy, glam, swanky nightlife vibe, helped a lot by this giant chandelier bar that's right by the entrance. I mean, it's pretty sexy. There are still a couple of random elements, like these books, rotary phones, and Ariana Grande masks, but it kind of makes sense to me as like a giant nightclub. We did three activities here, which is kind of a lot, starting with one of their not-so-secret speakeasies. They have like a secret bar inside of a barber shop, which unfortunately was closed for a private event, so instead, we went to their secret ski lodge bar. The least speakeasy thing ever. We have a map to where the speakeasy is. Right. We already got lost though, so yes. I guess it succeeded in being hidden. This one is next to the entrance of this really colorful restaurant they have, Super Frico, and inside, it's 1980s ski movie themed, and they've done a pretty good job with it. As someone who's never seen a 1980s ski movie, I felt like I was there. Uh, two polar bears populating right there. Oh, really? Wow. They're doing it like they do on the Discovery Channel, yeah. Literally, yeah, yeah. They have a bunch of wintry drinks. It is just a gimlet of holiday joy. What? But my favorite thing was 
the personal s'mores roasting plate that we got. It's like KBBQ, but it's s'mores. Where they give you a little mini barbecue, marshmallows, chocolate, and graham crackers, and you can roast them right there. All right, I think it's probably ready. <laughs> Besides that. Oh yeah, ready for the club. <laughs> The Cosmo also has a bunch of hip and or insta-famous restaurants like Milk Bar and Egg Slut, as well as celebrity chef restaurant David Chang's Momofuku, which we did stop by. There right she flows. Oh yeah. If you couldn't tell by now, we are cooking up a celebrity chef restaurant video, so we'll save our full review for a bit later. I do like that. But the Cliff Notes version is that the corn is out of this world. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm trying to feed you the corn. Then finally, before retiring to our room, we're full, let's go. We did hit up the chandelier bar, which I like because it kind of feels like you're in a giant crystal cocoon and is also pretty good people watching. It's kind of like a big pillow fort. Like we're on the inside and everyone else is just walking around the outside. Also, if you are my mom or the YouTube monetization squad, these drinks are all mocktails, I promise. Now that's a lot on the Cosmo, so we'll keep our review of the room brief. All right, come on in. The heaviest door in all of mankind. The room is quite good. It's clean, it feels like it was recently updated, and there is also a dash of theming up here as well. There's some glitz, some gold, some jewel tones, some sexy lady in the bathroom, and a bit of a suggestive view into the shower. It's kind of like a sensual thing. I can see you pretty well through it. For me, I just found it very comfortable. Ooh. Oh, that's nice. Excuse me as I grope myself. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and I did also like our view of the Bellagio fountain show next door. Okay, that's sick. Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Which is, if you couldn't tell, where we're heading next. For day five, which we're calling our mega famous casino day. We are feeling pretty good, energized, ready for today, which is about to be intense. Yeah. Because we have four hotels on the itinerary for today. On the docket were the pretty well-known Bellagio of Ocean's Movies fame, Caesar's Palace of The Hangover fame, and The Mirage, whose volcano is featured in pretty much every B-roll shot of Vegas ever. We're also gonna be hitting up the Nobu Hotel inside of Caesar's as well. And these are all hotels that Tyler and I know pretty well. We've never stayed at the Bellagio, but we've been there a bunch of times. We have stayed at Caesar's, and we've also stayed at the Mirage. Oh, there's Saf. Hey, she's tiny. The Bellagio in general is very vaguely Italian villa themed, since this fountain is supposed to be Lake Como. And once you've scaled the ramp, you're greeted with a really beautiful interior. The Bellagio is large, luxurious, and lavish. That's pretty good. It's also very crowded today, so. The lobby has an intricate blown glass Chihuly flower bed on the ceiling. And just beyond that, you have the conservatory and botanical gardens. Oh, wow. Which is one of the Bellagio's marquee attractions. While we were there, it was kind of like jungle animal themed. I like the sound design. Me too. Is that a Jurassic Parky? I was gonna say soaring over California. Yes. And this is another little spot on the strip where you can get a nice breath of fresh air. There's natural light, it smells good, and all of those plants really hit you with a dose of oxygen. This is wonderfully fresh and breezy, also extremely crowded. People are cutthroat to get their Instagram, it's like for real. Yeah. So even though it is very busy, I really like it. The rest of the hotel is similarly gilded and ornate. You've got a very large casino floor, tons of restaurants, and also a very luxury mall inside of the hotel on one side. So overall, the Bellagio common areas, very nice. Unfortunately, come on in. The room, not so nice. First impressions were that the room was fine. It's pretty big. It's a nice size for sure. They have decent features. The decor feels a little dated, but overall that's not a big deal. So when you see this room, you're not gonna think it looks bad. You're gonna think it looks decent. Oh. That's pretty plush. Oh, it's plush? I was gonna say plush. Yeah. But the devil is truly in the details, and that devil lies inside this mini fridge. We've been opening the mini fridges in the different rooms just to check them out, and to this point, they had been pretty uneventful. The mini fridge at the Bellagio, however, contained a box of something that must have been in there for at least a month or more. It smells insane in here right now. <laughs> Trying to air it out. Because it was super rotten. Ah, uh, it's that. I'm literally holding my breath. And after like 10 seconds of the mini fridge being open, it was like a stink bomb had gone off. I just gotta get out of here because it smells so bad. 
<laughs> no, I mean, like, listen, bed, fine. Every, it's, it's, it's bad. It's, it's. <laughs> so bad. I am really not trying to just be a hater. I like the Bellagio. I like the Botanical Gardens. I like the vibe downstairs. But it's pretty bad to have like a rotting box of food in the mini fridge because it, it smells like it's been there for a while, like not just since like yesterday. So we vacated the premises and the casino and moved on to our next hotel, Caesars Palace. We're really in the thick of it now. Big time. Now, Caesars is great. It's really big and as the name implies, it's really ancient Roman themed. I gotta be honest, Caesars Palace is one of my favorite casinos on the strip. It's just a classic, you know? And they go all in. Caesar himself. The man with the plan. There's a lot of grand fountains, columns, marble. There's like a Colosseum performance venue. You. I think Adele goes here, I don't know. And there are a lot of statues, some of which are pretty naked. Wow. Just hang in brain. His market has been carved in great relief. It's also the oldest still operating hotel on this side of the strip as it opened in 1966. Tyler and I have stayed here before, and when we were here last time, we got a slightly more upgraded room. Oh, come on in. Mirrored headboard. The base room that we had on this trip was a little bit banged up, I would say. Still acceptable. Ooh, with multiple shower heads. All right, all right. But objectively, there were some scuff marks here and there and some general wear and tear. Our, like, desk has seen better days. Oh, yeah. I wonder if it's because people try to recreate the hangover experience too much at, like, Caesar's Palace. Yeah, it's uh, Mike Tyson and a tiger. That's who did all this. My take on the room is that Caesar's has a low floor but a high ceiling. So the base rooms are are pretty basic. It's a little hard. Let me try to scrunch up to you. But you can get a nicer room at Caesars, somewhere in their many towers. Speaking of other towers, let's quickly touch on the Nobu Hotel, which is a mini hotel inside of Caesars. There's not a lot to it. It's next to and is affiliated with the Nobu Sushi Restaurant. All I really know about it is that it's expensive, it's in Malibu, and Chris Jenner likes it. <laughs> <laughs> and the hotel is basically a check-in desk, an elevator shaft, Buttonless. There's no buttons in here. Let's <laughs> hope so we go to the right floor. And some rooms. But make no mistake. Yeah? Ooh. Come on in. Oh, it's super AC. Oh, it's nice. The rooms are pretty luxe. This is nice. This is nice. <laughs> like the restaurant, the rooms are definitely Japanese inspired and they go all in with the styling here. You have the dark wood, some ink calligraphy vibes. The finishings and furniture are all really, really good. It also feels pretty upscale with a very comfortable bed. Oh, I sank right into that. And an awesome bathroom. Whoa, the bathroom's huge. My one gripe is that if you're gonna go all in with the Japanese inspired styling, you might as well throw in a high-tech Japanese toilet because I feel like the only thing this bathroom is missing is a toilet with a heated seat, bidet, and chirping birds that sing when you pee. That is something that maybe no we should look into. They had it at the capsule hotel. Just a suggestion. Now back out to Caesars proper. As we mentioned before, there is a ton of stuff here. There's a giant game of bingo happening behind us. That's the first round of bingo I've seen so far. That's just fun. There's a huge club, there's a giant sports book, and there's a bunch of celebrity chef restaurants. I can take a chai latte by Guy Savoy. As well as multiple Gordon Ramsay restaurants. For our upcoming celebrity chef video, we did go to Hell's Kitchen, and we will not spoil our review of the place. Not the beef Wellington magnet. But here is a shot of me with Digital Gordon. We will, however, spoil our review of Lisa Vanderpump's Cocktail Garden. There she is, that saucy minx. She's more of a restaurateur than a chef, but she is also Tyler's celebrity crush, so he was pretty excited. It says, in Vanderpump Veritas. <laughs> the place is arguably over-decorated and the drinks are very expensive, but we enjoyed ourselves. Goodbye, Kyle. I recommend the Veni Vidi Lychee and not the coconut thing that Tyler got. Yours is crazy. I'm not picking that. After our mini Bacchanal, we explored one of our favorite parts of Caesar's Palace, the Forum Shops, which I like because it is a huge mall with a wide range of shops that is also themed with statues, fountains. I love that indoor fountain Vegas smell. Love it. And there's a fake sky, which gives it that it could be 2 a.m. or 2 p.m. kind of feel. So after traversing the ancient Roman side streets, I've seen a lot of marble cubes today. Yeah, a lot. 
that. Yeah. We finally emerged into the desert to see our final hotel of the day, the Mirage. Now, a couple of interesting things about the Mirage. When it was built in 1989, it was known as the Strip's first mega resort, having not only a casino, but also a dolphin habitat, magic show, and famous volcano fountain out front. And since then, a ton of the other Vegas casinos we know now were remodeled or built to mirror this strategy. The other thing is that the Mirage has recently been sold and is gonna be turned into a giant guitar-shaped hard rock casino, so what you see now is not gonna be around for much longer. As we've mentioned, we've stayed at the Mirage before. It has a general tropical island theme with large fish tanks, some palm trees, a mermaid statue, and a very specific scent. To me, what I always remember about the Mirage is the smell. It smells exactly like the physician's formula, Murumuru butter bronzer. It smells incredible. We got to the Mirage kind of late in the day, but we still did do a few things. First off, we went to the Tom Colicchio Steakhouse, also for our upcoming video. In this business, one day you're in, the next, you're out. That's not Top Chef. Which is right in the middle of the casino floor, but is also kind of hidden behind a pond, where we got a spectacular bowl of gazpacho. There's watermelon in there. Oh yeah? Yeah. And then the volcano show was surprisingly bumping. Dude, this is a pretty big event. I mean, there's even a guy selling spinny things. Yeah. I would have said it was a less popular version of the Bellagio Fountain Show. <laughs> but there were hundreds of people out there watching this thing. I guess people do have some appreciation for the classics. You know, for being 32 years old, people like that thing. I thought you were talking about yourself for a second. I know. <laughs> and then as for the room, come on in. It was okay. Honestly? Not bad. Once again, we've stayed here before, and our impression of it in the past is that it's a pretty good deal. This room is a little less nice than the room we stayed in last time, but it's definitely adequate. The bathroom is a little small. It does seem clean. There's Tyler. The style is a little indistinct. It's got a carpeted section and a tiled section. Look at that. But it was fine. Because we're sleeping tonight. I think it's fine. It's pretty good. All right, so that's a wrap on day five. It's wrap on day five, people. And that all brings us to day six. Mr. Me, Paolo. Now, the two hotels for this day don't have a ton in common, so we're just calling this day Treasure Island and Resorts World. Maybe you could call them the odd couple. Treasure Island is just next door to the Mirage, and as you might have guessed, is pirate themed. The exterior is very promising. There's a port with a bunch of ships out there, and when you walk in, there is a bit of like Isle of Tortuga pirate stronghold vibes. Come answer my siren song. Follow me into the sea. But that quickly fades into vague nautical to no theme at all. You have Senor Frogs in there, which is like a Cabo thing, and then also Gillies, which is like a mechanical bull-having saloon type of place, and a CVS, none of which scream pirate. You know what there's a dearth of here? Water features. Oh, hard agree. It seems like this phasing out of the theme is purposeful on TI's part. They used to have a pirate show, they got rid of it, but I think that's a mistake because right now it's kind of in a wishy-washy no man's land where the style has sort of descended into a generic nothing. I need more of this. I need more of this in my life. General boat stuff. My criticism here extends to the room as well. Come on in. Okay. Which was actually pretty solid in terms of accommodation. This is pretty nice. I like the view. Not the biggest, but nothing was wrong with it. Oh, it's hard. I was gonna say timber, but I realize it's shiver me timbers. It's not the same thing as timber. But I could have used a treasure map, a painting of a parrot, a mermaid, anything. Even just like an island beach scheme would be good for the art, you know, like we've washed ashore. They have a great theme and they do nothing with it. They're not doing anything with it. It's, 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 it's even less than everywhere else. As for the activity here, a vast humanities, we're setting sail. Why am I always Irish? Once again, it's a little random. They have like a very built out Marvel Avengers station. As a medium fan of the Avengers, how are you feeling? I'm a fake fan. I, have yeah, no I, don't, I don't think you've ever even seen any of these movies. <laughs> I don't know anything. Which is well done. Like they have a lot of original props and costumes from the movies. There's an interactive experience or two. How do we go in here? To Tom Hiddleston's bedroom. Which I did enjoy. Yeah, it's Robin Tripp's And I did like the last game where I was shooting hammers at this guy that Tyler has informed me is named Ultron. Honestly, a thumb workout. I was like swiping like my life depended on it. After 
Treasure Island, we embarked on one of the longer walks of our trip over to Resorts World. Luckily, the gods were in our favor, and we were graced with a little bit of rain during our trek. It feels nice out. Uh-oh, I got some water on the camera. So our 20-minute walk between the two hotels was about 10 degrees cooler. We could use one of those things. Where to get that scooter? Though I was a little worried about the lightning at our heels. Now, Resorts World requires some explaining because it's confusing. Whoa, it's green in here. This place is enormous. It's very new, and it's also kind of three hotels mashed together into one. Do we think this is the way to the check-in desk? I think it is. Okay. Yes. Where there's casino, there could be check-in desk. Where each tower of the hotel is operated by a different subsidiary of Hilton. So you could have a room in Resorts World, but be staying in a completely different hotel based on where you are. There, I think. Another thing to note is that they also had to change their design a few times while they were building, as they were sued by the wind for basically stealing the wind's design. And it kind of feels like they're still reeling from that, as I would say the design and decor of the place is a bit cacophonous. I like eggs. It's very shiny, modern, and grand, and there's a lot of artwork, but beyond that, it sort of feels like they're throwing spaghetti at the wall and seeing what sticks. We've got a mall with a giant orb in it. It's sort of like a Chicago bean and Epcot ball love child. We've got a number of elephant statues. Good view of the elephant butts right here. Oh, that's luxury. Probably the craziest bathrooms I've ever seen in my life. What the heck is going on in here, guys? Oh my god, oh my god. I can't see anything. And I think the entire building is actually a giant LED screen. Literally, what is Resorts World doing right now? <laughs> All that said, I liked it. It does feel like they're trying to entertain you in any way possible, and at least some of the spaghetti was sticking for me. This hotel's kind of like a greatest hits of Vegas. A quick aside for our room, which was in the Hilton Tower. Here we go. Come on in. It was very nicely furnished and finessed. <laughs> Mattress is kind of hard, but the linens are amazing. The linens are nice. And I liked the stylized elements. The vibes are blue and gold. White, gold, blue, kind of modern. The ceilings are high. Yeah. I do think it's somewhat entertaining that they spent what I can only imagine was a bajillion dollars on this hotel, just for most of us to have a view exclusively of Circus Circus, which we will talk about more tomorrow, but on this day, with the clouds and lightning storm around it, looked absolutely terrifying. Thunder! Feel the thunder! Lightning and the thunder! <laughs> In terms of the attractions of the hotel, as we mentioned, there's a lot, but my absolute favorite part was their street eats. Oh, you can see them making the noodles right there. These noodles are on fire! Which is like an Asian cuisine-themed food hall that has a bunch of different stalls from a bunch of different countries. Thank you! We got the Steve Aoki Japanese skewers. A lot of yuzu action on this trip. I agree, everyone's in the yuzu. We got Singaporean chicken curry. I would say probably the call is to rip and dip. Hong Kong style dumplings, and kind of an X factor, they also have a tiger sugar boba stall. Sorry, I might have uh, milk tea your yakitori. And we also got strawberry cheesecake shaved ice from their dessert kiosk. Didn't you leave the table saying you were trying to get a small one? <laughs> Sizes. Okay, this is what we got. Which was chef's kiss. It was a good day. Yeah, more. Bring it. To be totally honest, this was one of my favorite dining experiences from the entire trip. Precarious bite, precarious bite. I'm going for it. Resorts World is kind of nice, so I would consider staying here again. But even if I wasn't staying here, I would come back for the street eats. It was that good. And all that brings us to our final day of part one. And this day we're calling our thrill ride day. Our hotels are Circus Circus and The Strat, and they have more in common than you would think. I wonder how much my perception of Circus Circus would improve if they just changed the billboard. Yeah. From the most terrifying clown of all time to just any other clown. In general, I have had a negative perception of Circus Circus in the past. I think mostly because of the large clown outside. This is what's gotta go, this thing. Yeah. And the rest of the exterior is not very welcoming either. However, when we went in on the morning of day seven, it was not that scary. In fact, it was pretty lively. Holy shit. It's super crowded. 
There were a ton of families in there, which makes sense after you take in what the actual attractions are. There's a food court. There's a lot of like boardwalk style shops. I love milfs. Oh my God, I thought it said I love miles. Never mind. <laughs> and a huge, very built out arcade with carnival games. Look at all the hamsters. And to put it over the top, they have circus acts that perform in the middle of the arcade like every hour. And they are really legit. We saw a really good trapeze act randomly at like 11 a.m. That was sick. That was amazing. So immediately, our book cover judgment was proved incorrect. I mean, it's pretty cool. That said, I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. The residential area wasn't great. The elevator up to the room, we're pretty sure, broke down. It's like actually kind of Stranger things -y. And the hallway to our room was kind of nightmare-inducing. Not my favorite hallway. And though the room itself, come on in, seemed serviceable and decently clean, this is not too bad. The bed was a bit stiff, the bathroom was a bit lacking, and the walls, the walls are objectively thin. It was in some ways a comfort to know that there were a lot of other people around, but at the same time, you can hear everything. I'm very, very thankful that there are no clowns in the room. Maybe there's clowns in his room. <laughs> but we said today was a thrill ride day, and watching trapeze artists does not a thrill ride ride. So our activity at Circus Circus was actually their Adventure Dome, which is an indoor theme park inside this large glass big top tent at the back of the hotel. That is a legit roller coaster. And it's nice in here. It feels newer, it's very air conditioned and breezy. Everything is kind of pink tinged because of the red glass. On camera? It looks crazy. But there are a lot of rides, and some of them are biggies. Dragon! We tried two of their roller coasters, one of which was called the Canyon Blaster. <laughs> which was pretty intense. It blasts my candy. And we also did El Loco, which is kind of like a stop, start, upside down kind of ride. Did we, do that one? we did. Oh my God. Now, to be frank, I don't see myself planning on staying at Circus Circus again, but I would definitely go back to the Adventure Dome. The Adventure Dome is good. Yes. Straight up. The air is fresh, the rides are fast, and they didn't mess my back up the way the New York, New York roller coaster did. No holds barred. I like it here. So with our expectations subverted, we headed out into the heat for another long trek to our final hotel. Oh my God. This is a hell of a walk. The Strat, at the very, very end of the strip. Will we be able to make it? Like, in life? Yeah. We're yeah. about to find out. And unlike the previous day, where we had some cloud coverage and a little drizzle, this walk was punishingly hot. This is a pretty tough walk. This is pretty bad. This is pretty hot. It's well over a mile, and it's not very fun. To be fair, no one really asked us to walk. No. We just thought it would be interesting. Yeah. And we're regretting that decision. Yeah. Tyler kept trying to film as we were walking, and I started yelling at him. I am baked. Straight up baked. Get in there. Go. Don't wait. Don't wait for the shot. Just go. Now, the Strats thing is that it's tall. It is vaguely like metropolitan or skyscraper themed, but most of the energy of the Strat is all the way at the top of the building. So the bottom of it is a little bit more of an afterthought. And that sort of carries through to the rooms as well. Come on in. I didn't mind the room at the Strat at all, though it was a little small. For the price, I thought it was clean, pretty comfortable, and overall acceptable. Listen, there's air conditioning. Yeah. <laughs> After that really long walk. There's air conditioning, and nothing looks visibly dirty, and I'm cool with it. Obviously, the big negative of staying here is that you're really far away from the rest of the Strip, but they do have their own draw. <gasps> oh my God, that's freaking terrifying. Pure, unadulterated adrenaline. We mentioned that the Strat's thing is its height. It does actually have, at 1,149 feet tall, the highest observation point in the United States. It looks really cool. I am getting a little weak in the knees, though. Yes. And what they do up there is you can look, eat, or do a bunch of really insane thrill rides. Yeah, I'm not doing that one. Whose theme is to remind you that you could fall to your death at any moment. You're gonna fall. Never mind. We briefly considered bungee jumping, but settled on doing this Tower of Terror-esque drop ride right at the very top of the spire. That's up. I don't know if I can handle it. The big shot. You're doing it, baby. 
You're nervous. I can't, I can't, I can't deal with this <laughs> And when you get up there, it's so hot. It's so high up. Oh my god. And there's like no one else doing these rides, which doesn't inspire a lot of confidence. But after some convincing... Why are we doing this? I got strapped in, closed my eyes... <laughs> and proceeded to scream bloody murder for like a minute straight. I did briefly open my eyes while we were shooting through the air. <laughs> and I hated it. How long was I sitting there just screaming? The entire time, yeah. <laughs> That's all to say, I would not do this again. I think I prefer the Adventure Dome. <laughs> <laughs> After that, we moved on to their more pleasant experience, their dinner at the top of the world, which is a restaurant that rotates around the top of the spire, so you can sit and eat and get 360 degree views. The food I thought was okay. It's a lot of calamari. It's pretty expensive up there, and it was a little experimental when it didn't need to be. One word, tangy. But when you're not being catapulted around the top of it, the view from the Strat is pretty impressive. There's that damn walk from Circus Circus. And being at the end of the strip, it was cool to be able to see both all of the hotels we'd already stayed at and the ones that were to come. 19 down, 14 more to go. All right, we'll see you guys in part two. It's time for the other side of the strip. Oh damn, I saw some lightning in the distance.